Hello, this is Angela Anderson. Thanks for joining me for this acrylic painting tutorial. In this video, I'm going to be showing you how to paint a simple sunset with a sailboat uh, on the ocean. Uh, it'll be very easy beginner level project, I think. I'm going to keep it uh, simple and show you step by step how to do it all the way from start to finish. Got my husband, Mark, with me. Hey there, everybody. He's man in chat for this live show, so if you've got questions, you can post those and we'll try to answer them while I'm painting. All right, let's get started. So this is a reference photo. Uh, we may uh, change up the clouds just a little bit, but uh, I cropped it so that the uh, ocean part of the water part was at the third mark here, and the sailboat was also on the third crosswise this way. So if you split it this way, the sailboat's like right smack dab in our center of attention, whatever. <laughs> so I'm gonna use a... Uh, ruler here, T-square, and just make a line on the third mark. So just mark, uh, this is a uh, 9 by 12 inch canvas panel. It's a 12 ounce cotton Dixie Pro canvas panel by Fredericks. Ooh. I know. <laughs> They're I need, I need to get a soundtrack for canvas that. sponsor. <laughs> so thank <laughs> you to them. And uh, we're going to be using a few basic brushes. I'll go over those really quick too. Um, Got the number 12 bright, a number four filbert, and a number six angle brush in the 6100 series. Also, number two round and a number two aught round, two zero, two over zero. Um, then we've got a couple specialty brushes. There's a Deerfoot stippler and a fan brush. So uh, from the select line, we'll do the some of the clouds, maybe a little bit of the details on the water with the fan brush. Um, and then if we need them, we'll have uh, a couple angle brushes off the side here. We've got a quarter inch and a three eighths inch angle from the velvet touch line. All of our brushes are Princeton brushes. They are our brush sponsor, so thank you to them. Um, and if you are interested in finding their, those brushes that I'm gonna be using today, those are down in the description. Also the link to uh, Amazon where you can find the canvases. Um, all that information is down in the description. All right, let's go over our colors really quick. Got unbleached titanium, titanium white, cadmium red light, cadmium orange, yellow oxide, cadmium yellow medium, phthalo green yellow shade, burnt sienna, and burnt umber. And really, you could just do this with red and yellow and uh, maybe a little bit of blue uh, and brown. It, you, you can simplify this if you need to. If you don't have all these colors, that's fine. You can really do these uh, this with any set of colors that you want to, but I'll just show you how I'm trying to get it as close to the original photo. It's very kind of sepia, sepia toned. So I've made a line with my T-square all the way across, and we're just gonna start throwing some paint on here. So I'm gonna dip my brush in the water, pick up some white, and I'm just going to pull it from the side of the puddle of the paint. And I'm not really ever really going to just be dipping straight down into the paint. I'm always going to be kind of pulling off to the side and then find a spot on your uh, palette to kind of offload. And I just kind of smush the brush to the side to kind of get that brush to kind of come off right here. And then I'm going to pick up some, let's pick up some of the yellow oxide. I'm going to smush that down right there too and then a little bit of this orange. And I'm just using the corner of my brush here to pick up just a little bit less. So if I want a lot of paint, I'm gonna pick up with the flat part, and if I just want a little bit of paint, I can kind of pull it off from the corner of the brush. So I've got just a little bit of the orange in here, and mostly the yellow oxide, and then the white to soften it up. So this will be kind of our starting colors. I'm gonna just a little bit more of that yellow oxide. There we go. I wanted more a little bit of golden color. And I'm just going to go side to side here. You can spritz your canvas with a little bit of water if you need to to help um, the paint go on a little smoother. That sometimes can help. This canvas is going to be dry right at first when we first put this paint on here. So. You will want to add water to your brush every time you're 
picking up more paint. I'm dipping in, not all the way, just, just a little bit uh, on the corner of the brush and adding it to my paint puddle so that I've got my paints getting hydrated, my brushes getting rehydrated. That will keep our paints going on smoothly. If your paint's not going on smoothly, a lot of times it's the water that's the problem. You don't need more paint on your brush, you just need more water in it. All right, so let's grab some yellow. I'm gonna add that to it, and as I get up to the top, I'm gonna go a little bit more golden with our colors. So our sun is actually kind of off the top of the canvas on this one. We're not seeing it. And I do have um, sunset paintings where you do see the sun, so if you want to add your sun to it, uh, I've got all kinds of different uh, paintings where where I showed how to do that if you want to. I'm just kind of going by what the photograph is showing us today, so you can make it your own and add a sun if you want to. It's up to you. All right, adding white here up toward the top. And you notice that I'm just working wet, going just above the layer that I just laid down, putting the new color on, and then pulling it down into that wet paint. That will help it blend down into our previous color. I'm gonna add a little bit more white up here. There we go, so we've got a really pretty kind of golden sunset going on. And then let's put some of this color down in our water right here. We're gonna have all these highlights in our water. So I'm just gonna lay these out horizontally, put in some of this gold color down here. All right, there we go. All right, so on the water part, I'm gonna add a little bit of the phthalo blue and it's going to mix with these oranges this orangey kind of yellow it's going to create kind of a gray green color I'm adding more orange to it this is really not blue it's a it's really kind of a washed out blue blue green that we're dealing with down here in the sides so here we go, I'm going to put some of that in, coming in from the sides. It's going to look kind of weird at first, but we're going to add other colors to it. So, And I want to keep these horizontal. If you have trouble keeping your line straight up here, what you can do is dry your background and then put some tape along that edge, some painter's tape. Give it a nice, strong edge. Let's make another color with our blue. I'm going to grab a little bit of burnt sienna this time. I haven't cleaned out my brush, so I still have, I have some oranges and yellows in here, but I'm going to pick up a little bit more of the blue and some green and I'm going to, or some burnt sienna, which will make it a kind of a teal green, blue, blue green. And I'm gonna go side to side with that. Isn't that a pretty color? Go right up against that line. Kind of Arkansas Tech colors. Are they? Mm -hmm. That green and gold. Green and gold, you're right. I hadn't thought of that. Okay. I'm going to switch to a little bit smaller brush now so I can get a little bit more detail. I'm going to use the filbert here. And a little bit more white. A 
I'm going to go along that edge very thin. Like this farthest away here is going to be very small lines. And then as we get closer, we're going to have a little bit bigger lines in our waves. But far back here, they're going to be just very little tiny lines. Short and close together. Grab some of that darker teal, add some of that in here. Grab some of this other green, add some of that. So we really got kind of three blue greens happening back here. We've got some white white added in. We've got this one that's a little bit more golden yellow over here. I'm just going to use all three of them. And fill in. I don't want to go over the top too much of our yellow yet. Just kind of coming in from the sides a little bit, keeping all these brush strokes horizontal. Grab some of that darker color. We'll just kind of tap in some of that darker color here along the sides. So somebody's commented that they wouldn't have thought about using green in this picture, and I'm on their side. Oh yeah. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> Very interesting. But I, I mean, know what you you're have doing. To use green, so. Well, no, I mean you it's. Use whatever colors you wanted to, really. Is that light sneaking in on your palette there? Huh? Is that light sneaking in on your palette? I don't know what you're talking about. Light? Light yeah, from the sun shining through the window. Oh, yeah, it sure is. Yeah. I might yep. have to get your grabby thing and try to close that. Okay. So I've mixed some white with my phthalo, or my um, yellow oxide here. And I'm just going over this area here. A little bit of white. coming from the side. It's coming from this side over here. Mm. You tried. Mm. Yeah, it's fine. All right, so I'm going to use some of this. I'm going to add just a little bit of our green, but not much. And I'm going to add some of this in here. There's some areas of yellow that comes out this way and I'm just kind of using the edge of my filbert brush the corner of it so that I can get these kind of thin lines So uh, in your Facebook group, mm -hmm. you have a, uh, a Facebook chat just talking about varnishing and sealing. Yes. Is that correct? Mm -hmm. So you can go down below. There's links to all the social media. There's a fa Thankful Art uh, Facebook group. Yes. And go in there and you can... Go to the video section. And request to join kind of if you're not already oh, joined. Yeah. Because yeah. it's moderated. It is. We don't let just anybody in. We try to keep it focused on the painting and what everybody's doing. Using the fan brush and a little bit of the yellow, cadmium yellow medium here. Then once you're in, you go to where? Videos. Videos. And it's one of the first ones that I did, so it's a very old one. It's probably two or three years old in there. So you'll have to scan back a little bit to find it. But... Um, 
just tapping here with this fan brush to get kind of these golden sparkles on our water. Now you can see we're having these darker colors in here on the sides really makes these lighter colors now start to pop. If we didn't have these dark enough it would look a little bit more flat. So, And back here I'm going to really just kind of barely tap so I get very thin lines and then closer to the bottom here I can kind of use the corner of my brush get a little bit bigger sparkles, a little bit bigger lines happening. See that? It's already kind of starting to look sparkly. And the sparkles don't go out too far. They kind of end right in here. They kind of stay in towards the center here, so I'm not going all the way out here with them. I'm going to keep them in the middle here. It's magical. It is kind of magical, honestly. It's it's pretty in you know, it's just color and mm -hmm. values and, you know, and layers putting the and right, mm -hmm, putting the right ones combinations together. But it's it's pretty cool how it we can replicate light and water just by a few dabs on the canvas. Well, I'm glad you're painting this one because I have no idea how to do this. <laughs> so. People, people, you're in luck. Angela's painting tonight <laughs> instead of me. So, got her on a good night. <laughs> All right, we're going to grab some of the cadmium red light now. And we're going to add just a little bit of that into some of these waves out here. So, these ones are getting a little bit more of the darker colors. We, we still have the ripples and things, but they're. Not as bright. So we're getting some of these red tones in our water. These are the areas where the waves are catching the light and the darker areas are where they're in shadow. Okay. And if you think I'm making this up, I I totally zoomed in on this photograph, so I wanted to see what colors were down in those waves really deep, and I zoomed way in on my computer and to, you know, just to see what these colors were. And that's how I'm coming up with these reds and, and things and greens, because they were all in there hiding, but when they kind of, when you look at them from far away, you don't really see these reds and things. It's very subtle, but... Uh, when you kind of zoom in really tight, then you can see, oh, okay, there's all these colors happening here that I didn't see. And I'm going to tap just a little bit of it in here, too. Okay, really pretty. Some pretty colors together, too. I like the, the kind of green and gold. Peachy. It's really kind of a peach. Peach and sea foam. Remember when that was a thing? We had that in our house. Oh, yes, I do. <laughs> and pink countertops. We did have pink countertops. That was not a well thought out decision, but you know. We were all in. It looked good at the time. We had <laughs> white and pink striped. White and pink striped. Uh, Wallpaper in the dining room, pink, and I'm talking pink countertops, like this color pink. Yeah, like Pepto. <laughs> Baby pink, Pepto Bismol mm. pink countertops, <laughs> and blue carpet this color. Oh man, it was a it dream. Was sweet. That was our first house. I got to pick all the colors. That was what, how old were we? Not very old. 21? You were so. living out a childhood dream, I think. I think so. <laughs> <laughs> Decorating your dollhouse. I never got to. <laughs>
Oh my gosh. I can't believe that house sold. <laughs> I'm and, sure they changed everything as soon as we... And I stayed with you, too. So. Yeah, you you put up with it. So. All right, I'm going to use the round brush here. I've got um, the orange now, and I've added white to it, but I've kind of mixed in a little bit of the, the yellow, too, that was out there. I'm just going to use a little bit of this, kind of do some more... Zigzaggy kind of lines. I'm kind of keeping them fluid. Um, we want them horizontal, but they can kind of have a little bit of a curve to them. So they can kind of do this sort of um, wave happening thing. You say you want to do the wave? I'll start it. <laughs> okay, you missed it. Okay, I missed it. it's coming to you. Okay, I'll come back around. Okay, I'll catch it on the way back. Here okay. you go. <laughs> Still nothing. Okay, that's that's better. It's a <laughs> slow rolling wave. It's going all the way around the world and back. <laughs> so the chat needs to just say wave, wave, wave. And then <laughs> gets back. Okay, so adding a little bit of the orange. Uh, I don't want it that bright, so I'm gonna grab some of the burnt umber. A little bit of burnt or the the blue. Mix that together, make it gray. on the slightly on the uh, green or blue side but not not too much and let me use the fan brush again let me see A little bit more brown there. Okay, so we want it kind of a brown, brown color. This is our contrast color, so we're gonna use this strategically here. Add some shadows in our waves, and I'm gonna go right up underneath some of these highlighted waves, just to add a little bit of detail. Some of these. Keep these ones up here really small, so okay. You, tiny little. You, you really need to make this look harder. Why? Because everybody just says like you're making it look too easy. It's really not that hard. No. As long as you keep that perspective right, you're pretty much it's not that difficult. Can you throw in some size or something at least? Make it, make it sound <laughs> like you're really... I like doing this. Oh, okay. All right. I'm having fun. <laughs> <laughs> okay. And we can always kind of soften these up later if we get too too dark, but we do we do need some... Some contrast back in here. Keeping these horizontal. That's the main thing. We kind of keep these lines horizontal. And I'm kind of doing different planes. So they're not all in a straight line. You know, they're kind of overlapping. So these ones come out a little bit farther. These go back. These ones are kind of in and out. That's if you look at the picture, that's kind of how... Um, it looks so it'll kind of make it look a little bit more natural if we do them in these kind of lines that sort of overlap a little bit I 
And if at any point you are happy with yours and you don't want to add any more colors, you just stop. It's your painting. You can add as much or as little detail as you want. So I'm going to kind of drag this to the side on these ones over here that are farther down. They can be a little bit wider and bigger. Well, let's work on our clouds while we let this dry and we'll probably put one more layer on here as we as it dries but I want to put some of our clouds in so I'm going to grab some white on the tip of my brush here this is the Deerfoot Stippler maybe a little bit of yellow and I'm going to wipe most of it off so that it's just mostly on the very leading edge of the brush and I'm going to use chalk to just kind of draw out some cloud shapes so this is dry now so we can do some of these sort of random cloud shapes up and down can you see that there we go There's sort of two layers of clouds here, so we'll do sort of two lines. This back one, I'm going to start and tap in right along that edge. The key to clouds is to not have too much paint on your brush at any one time. When you get too much paint on your brush, that's when you get these solid looking blobs. So I have very little paint. I wipe most of it off on my paper towel, get a little bit more paint, tap it on my paper towel to get most of it off. And I'm tapping most of it off of this back side of it so that the if I have any, you know, uh, main color at all, it's right there on the very tip of the brush and I'm just tapping and kind of scrubbing from side to side to get that paint to kind of smush down into the canvas. So this is what happens when you leave your brush in the water. Start to chip. <laughs> this one's been abused. Okay, so there's our first layer of cloud. Isn't that fun? So let's get some more. We could add different colors if we wanted to. We could add orange, maybe. Just a tiny bit of orange to this one. And do it the same way. Tap. Very soft. So we really haven't said hi to everybody. Hey guys. Welcome. Oh. Glad yeah. to have you join us. Yes, it's great to have everybody here. We've got a lot of our uh, unusual suspects with us tonight. Nice. Some people who've been with us for a couple of years. Let's look back through some notes that I used to take and saw some names like, wow, it's been two years. <laughs> That's incredible. <laughs> And they're sticking with us. That's amazing. So, so either you're really good, <laughs> or they're a little crazy. <laughs> Don't know, but we'll see. <laughs> but yeah, a little we'll bit of both. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, we're a little. What was it? The Mad Hatter. We're all mad here. That's or right. We're all mad here. Everybody's <laughs> welcome. <laughs> <laughs> we have actually have that on the soap dish in our bathroom. So. <laughs> Using some of this cadmium yellow, a little with a little bit of this 
white that we used in our clouds. I'm just kind of dipping in and I'm going to kind of come back in here and put some brighter. And I'm going to go over the darker areas that I put in and that way they'll kind of soften them up a little bit. They're still there but they're not quite as in your face. I know there are a lot of these if you look at them they're kind of fuzzy the shapes and colors and things that are happening so I'm just going to go over this with this yellow and just kind of soften up some of this that's going on in here the yellow is an opaque color this one is but it, it, it won't cover it up completely so you can kind of get away with doing this. It'll kind of cloud those colors out a little bit. Soften them up. Make them look a little bit more kind of dreamy sunset feeling. So I'm going out over the top of most all of this. Even out into here. Okay. more white. Well, we can use some of this unbleached titanium, I guess. Let's see if it's bright enough. Nah, it's not bright enough. Get some more white. We'll do one more layer on our clouds and then we'll be filling in our sailboat and that's pretty much it. It's pretty simple painting tonight. Very easy. friendly. I think if you do it in the steps that I showed you and uh, just keep in mind your proportions, keep these really small up here, get these lines bent down here a little bigger, um, that'll give you that illusion of distance. You could use whatever colors you wanted. If you wanted blues, you could use those instead of the green. All right, so I'm going to just kind of tap. I'm using this Number two round here. I'm going to tap in some sparkles on my water, really bright, and I'm going to keep it this part in our little shiny area where we want the brightest shine happening. It's not going to go on perfectly white because we've got those yellows underneath and they'll kind of bleed through so. It'll, it'll look brighter when we first put it on, but as it dries, it'll get a little bit darker because it'll kind of, those colors underneath will sort of bleed through the white a little bit. So just dabbing little lines and they kind of interconnect, maybe do some zigzags in some places, a little bit bigger spots. on the uh, difficulty scale where are we sitting tonight? We're very easy, very, very easy with this one. I really think it's uh, a two, maybe three. I was going to say probably a three. You think? 3.6 I don't think so. Four. I don't think it's that hard. I really don't. Says her who has a YouTube channel teaching painting <laughs> with 30 years of instruction. <laughs> okay. I'll take your advice. Take your word for it then. I would do this painting with kids. I wouldn't maybe go into as much detail. I would probably just do the first couple layers and call it good. So, you know, little swipes of the yellow, a little bit of the green, some white, and be done. So, you know, with the kids. But like I said, you know, if you want to keep on going and, you know, add more detail, then, then yeah, it adds to the difficulty. But I think overall this is not a difficult painting at all. I think it's very, very doable for a beginner. So are you going to paint in the Megalodon? What? 
Oh, yeah. <laughs> no. I don't, I don't think they roar. I don't think fish roar, do they? Hmm? I don't think fish roar, do they? Probably not. The, the Megalodon might. I don't think mm. it's called the Megalodon, honey. The is Meg, it? isn't it? Isn't that the movie that just came out? Yeah, maybe it is. I don't know. Maybe you're right. Yeah, it probably is. Okay, so I'm going to add a little bit of yellow to this white here. And I'm going to use this brush and I'm going to gently, very lightly, outline some of my clouds. Be really thin with your line here. Don't overdo it. I'm just going to go right along that upper edge of it. I'm going to add that kind of halo that happens when... And I'm kind of wiggling my line so it's not a perfect little straight line. I want it wiggly and indistinct. Let's put some in here, maybe. So you're using the titanium white in there? There's some titanium white, but it's mixed with a little bit of yellow. Okay. Mm -hmm. And I don't have to do this everywhere. I'm just going to kind of put it a little bit mostly along the top edge right here where the brightest sunlight is hitting it. Maybe a little bit on this side. See that? Really pretty. Key with clouds too is just kind of you know keep your lines very um, when you look at them here they're all kind of all over the place you know in and out up and down um, they're not going to look like your you know clouds that you drew when you were in kindergarten so don't don't uh, Get too caught up on what they what you think they should look like. You know, just kind of look at your picture and try to try to look at the shapes. It helps if you want to grid it. You, that can help. Um, but I think, I think we're looking good. All right, let's draw in our sailboat here. So he's going to sit right. If you split this down in the middle and then split it again, it's going to fit right in between those two spots. So. Our sailboat's going to be right here, between here and here. And he's actually going to kind of come in a little bit from this side. This is the edge of the sailboat here. So it's going to kind of come in. And he's sitting right on the horizon line. If we were looking at it from a little bit more above, we probably would see him down here a little bit farther down. Um, but just the way that this picture was taken and the, the place where the photograph photographer was standing or, or watching or whatever uh, it looks like he's right on that horizon line so we'll just paint it in like that so this side is kind of a diagonal line this way this one is kind of curved in like this and then there is sort of a line that comes down a little bit and then comes up comes down kind of does this little square thing and then there's uh, you can zoom in, hun, if you want. Make, make it easier to see what I'm doing here. There we go. And then if you split this into three parts here, our mast is going to be here, and there's another one right here. There's a little bit, maybe a little farther forward. There, and this one is coming up. This, from here to here, is about equal to here to here so we're going to want our top of our sail to be right up here right there so we can line this up and this is actually kind of curved because it's probably dipping in the water or some it's not a straight line right here and you can make it straight if it bothers you but <laughs> up to you, your painting. I'm not going to come tell you what to do. I'm just showing you what I'm seeing. Alright, so if I did a diagonal line from here down, 
and we'd kind of continue this down this way. It kind of curves out a little bit, comes out over the top of the tip of our boat right there, just a little bit above it. I'm doing this light because I don't I want to be able to erase if I need to. I'll darken it in here in a minute for you. And then there's this one. These are kind of even right here. There's somebody standing right here on our boat. And it's coming out just slightly past. So if you kind of continue this, it's kind of coming out past right here. And then it's curving up to there. And then it splits off right here. And then this sail comes out this way a little bit and comes almost to the edge of that one, not quite touching it. And then this one overlaps a little bit right there. Right, I don't know why I have a circle up there because it's really not on the picture, so I'm going to erase that. <laughs> and I'm going to use a, let's use this brush here. This is the number 2-0 round. I'm going to use the Burnt Umber, some yellow oxide. I'm probably going to want to put some of this color in the water too, since I'm going to be using it in my boat. Probably be good to have it in the water. Some. So. I'm just going to fill this in. This part is going to be a little bit lighter up here. The sails up here are a little bit lighter than down below. The boat is a little bit darker. So I'm just kind of outlined it and then I'm just going to fill it in. And you may need to put a couple coats on here if it's not covering well the first time. Just kind of keep that in mind. It, that's pretty normal. So if it's streaking, don't try to keep adding paint while it's drying, it'll start to lift on you. So just let it dry completely and you can come back and paint it in later. Just get it as good as you can on the first try and then back in and fix anything that needs fixing later. Okay, add a little bit of the burnt, burnt umber here. What? People in chat are saying that there's some uh, some uh, lighting. It's kind of hard. Can you tilt the, the oh, canvas just a little yeah. bit? The glare, yeah. I don't know if that helped much, but I think it's just because it's wet paint. It's just showing kind of some glare because it's just wet. It's going to be a little bit. Let's grab that burnt umber here. I'm going to kind of tap in along that edge because this is kind of, there's all kinds of like little things happening in here. I don't want it to be a solid, solid line right there. Just make it a little bit fuzzier. There we go. And there's 
There's some little details here, so I'm just going to kind of use my brush to sort of do some small details on the boat. Small lines. These are totally optional. There's a couple of things poking out right here and here. Let's grab some of this lighter color for the sail over here. Grabbing that darker color for the bottom edge right here. And bringing up the top there. Okay, go ahead and zoom out there. Let's see what it looks like. And then let's use some of this color that we have here on our waves. So I'm going to use it in our It, uh, it looks like a sailboat from here. Good. Good to know. Thank you, honey. Well, you said let's zoom out and see what it looks like, so... Looks like... Uh, I was just letting you know. Oh, okay. Appreciate it. Mm -hmm. I got your back. Helping y'all any way I can. <laughs> All right, just adding some little lines with this burnt sienna mixture to our water, making it a little bit more golden. And we can even use some of the burnt umber too in some of our really dark areas. Want to add some of that? I'm use my finger to kind of. Soften up the darkest part. Don't be afraid to go really dark in here because having these dark and light contrasts would really give it some realism. What are you laughing at? When you spell a word so bad in English that it 
it uh, spell checks it, corrects it to a French word. <laughs> <laughs> you know you're pretty bad. You just did that? Mm-hmm. Okay. Use yellow oxide here and just sort of go over the top of my sail. <laughs> will do kind of what it did in the water there where I'm just kind of softening up the whole overall look of it. Making it look maybe like the sun is shining down on it. Casted some golden light over the top of it. We can add, if we want to, we can add some dark to our clouds. I don't know if we'd really need it, but we could um, use a little bit of that blue and yellow oxide. And orange. Thin it down with some white. And then I'm just going to use water and wipe most of it off. So I'm just going to kind of dry brush a little bit of from down there, pick up a little bit of water, use my finger, let's get a rub in a little tiny bit of this color, oops, I have other colors on my fingers there, don't want to do that, make sure your hands are clean, <laughs> now let's try it with the, the so we'll pick up a little bit of that color, wipe most of it off, and tap in just a little bit. Really, really subtle here. We don't want our clouds turning muddy. in yellow and pick a little bit of that color up so it's kind of closer to the color that we were stippling. There we go. I don't know why I'm doing this, but just adding more detail to those clouds. Totally optional at this point. We're right at an hour, so I'm going to go ahead and stop. Whoop. You're not going to do the birds? Oh, yeah. Well, I added the birds to the picture, so, but yes, I do oh, want to do yeah, birds. because people are asking for the birds. Yeah, I will. So let's go burnt sienna and a little bit of that burnt umber. Okay, but we'll charge them extra for the birds, okay? <laughs> well, this is free, honey. Oh. So. Oh, okay. Well, that plan didn't work out. <laughs> But yes, it is free. And, uh, but we do have a Patreon page. We do, if you want to uh, buy Traceable or support the channel in any way. Mm-hmm. Got all kinds of different things going on on Patreon. So there's a link down below. Yeah, that you hit the more, see more down there. And there's a Patreon. You can go there. It's a dollar a month for all Traceables going back to February 2017. And as many downloads as you want. And then there's a $5 level, which gets you the traceables plus access to a bonus private YouTube video each month. We just did it, the August one just this past Sunday, doing a portrait. 
Yep. And then there's a ten dollar level, which is you, all of that, plus you get access to a private Facebook group where Angela does more teaching, paintings and interactions and polls and things like that. So, and you can donate as much as you want, little or whatever. You're not held to those amounts. It's just at those levels you get those extra goodies yes. in there. So. All right, we got our little bird in, in there. Pretty much just an M, flattened out M with a little bit of a straight line for the body. Like a little smush in for the body. You can kind of see those. There we go. All right, there's our sailboat. And honestly, if you think it's too green, you could always go in and do a wash of the, you know, yellow over it again. Um, it is a little bit more green than my picture here, or than I intended it to be, so I could always go in and take some of that yellow oxide and wash over it. Kind of make it a little bit more of the gold tones. Yes, we got super chat. I turned awesome. my microphone off. <laughs> <laughs> okay, here let me find. We had two super chatters tonight. The first one was Sandy. Uh, she was unable to stay. She says only could tune in for three minutes, but can see it's worth the super chat. Oh. I'll be trying this soon. Have a great evening, everyone. Smiley face. Or actually a Thank really you, big si smiley face. Yes, thank you. And then the second one's from Carol. And she says, Angela, thanks so much for all the beautiful lessons you have been teaching. Learning so much. And mm -hmm. Mark for camera work and jokes. <laughs> <laughs> so thanks to both of you. We really appreciate the support through the Super Chat. And the Patreon you can uh, support that way. And then also by clicking the Amazon links down below and purchasing things through Amazon, Angela gets a little bit of a referral. Thank you from them. And then the brush guys, there's also that way to support so you can get things and uh, support the channel that way. Or you can just watch for free this. and it's just as good. Yes. It's all good. There's no pressure. No, I don't feel so. like you. Yeah. We are doing this because we love it. We love to share with you. It's uh, why I got into doing it in the first place. The fact that we can make a little bit of a money off of it is just a icing on the cake for me. I love it. <laughs> I was doing this before I made money in it, and I will continue to do it after. <laughs> it's, a, it's a love. And we just appreciate you guys who enjoy what we're doing and want to help help support us that means the world so thank you guys and uh, we'll be back on Saturday we've got a um, another one in our large flower series just softening that up it seemed a little dark to me um, another painting in our large flower series so if you enjoyed those and have painted along with us for the rose and the poppy and the other probably six or seven uh large flowers that we've done um, previously we're going to be doing a dahlia so it should be fun sorry I'm still seeing places where I want to add colors so just add a little bit more brown, brown here 
So, yeah, that'll be fun on Saturday. And then next Tuesday we'll be back for a black and white floral. It'll be really simple floral, black and white poppies uh, with, uh, we'll probably maybe use palette knife on it. I don't know. I haven't decided yet. So, um, anyhow, we'll, we'll see. It's probably just going to be really simple, uh, simple brush strokes or palette knife painting next Tuesday night. And then if you were here for the lion uh, video on, you missed it, we did a lion last Saturday. It turned out really cool. Um, and this was a viewer's choice one, so if you missed it, we are going to do the desert. Uh, it was a choice between the lion and the desert. We're going to do the desert in about three weeks. So be sure to check that out, too, if you wanted to see the desert. We, that will still be coming up. All right, guys, we'll see you next time. Thanks for joining us, and bye.